Welcome to day four of 31 days of Capture One. My name is Don Alabi. In today's episode, we'll go through saving camera specific settings. Somebody will ask, what's the importance of this? As photographers, we import images into Capture One almost all the time. Having a good workflow helps you save a lot of time. And a lot of time means more money to you. <laughs> saving frequently used settings will help you save a whole lot of time. in the end help you speed up your workflow certain settings you use most of the time and you wouldn't want to be going over all those things all the time in this tutorial i'll show you how you can save some time by saving some of these settings first of all these are settings that i used most of the time myself so i'll take you through that then you can also decide on what you would want to save for yourself also note that if you use more than one camera this setting will come in handy because then you will have settings specific to each camera that you use. Before we go into details, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the over 1,700 subscribers I have. You guys keep supporting me all the time and I really appreciate it. One setting I use most of the time is the ICC profile. Now, I have another tutorial on this whole thing. If you don't understand what it is, there's a tutorial for you. One major thing I use here is the curve. It has a whole lot of explanation, but as I said, it's in another video. So I prefer using portrait. This is with practice. I've practiced over some time and I realized portrait works for me. So I choose portrait. Now, this is where the magic happens. Over here where we have the three dots, you click on it and you see save as default for Nikon D750. I use the Nikon D750 so it automatically recognizes it. So when I click on this, it asks apply new defaults to the selected variants. I say apply. And now, anytime I import images from my D750, it will automatically apply the portrait curve to the ICC profile of each of those images. How sweet is that? So that's all I do here. The next thing I do is uh, under this place, I go all the way to clarity. Now, I like applying some clarity to my images. First of all, I go to um, negative 20. And then under structure, I go to negative 10. And then go here, and then save as default for D750. Same thing, apply. And then that's it. So anytime we import images, these settings will be applied to them. Aside that, I don't really do anything else because these things are image specific. I wouldn't want the same HDR applied to every image. I mean, outdoor images or indoor studio and all that they all have different settings so i would like to manually adjust this and then the exposure also i would like to manually adjust them so i don't do any um, camera specific settings for this even though it's possible so maybe if you do just studio portraiture and your lighting setup doesn't change that much you can adjust this and then save it the same thing applies to the hdr and then the levels one thing I do also is under the Luma curve, I like contrast, so I just give this uh, S curve and then same thing, save it. So as usual, when I import images from my D750, it automatically applies this curve to the images. You know, it ends up saving you a tremendous amount of time. So you don't do this over and over for each image that you import. Once these settings are saved, anytime you import images, they are applied automatically. So you just go straight to your raw processing and then start, you know, applying stuff, start changing sliders and all that and continue with your raw processing. So in a nutshell, this is what we have for today. Don't forget to like this video, hit subscribe, and then share it with anybody you think this will be of interest to. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for watching.